Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and nope, this is not a Halloween special, but today happens to be Halloween, and I mean, I'm feeling festive, spooky, and cute. <laughs> today, we are going to create some subtle, tonal colorways using low immersion techniques. A lot of times when I'm dyeing tonals, I do it in a kettle, and so the effects that we get are a little more random. But if we spread the yarn out more, you can get more control over your patches of dark and light tones of the same color. And so that's what we're gonna work on today. I would like to start off by giving a huge thank you and shout out to today's lab partner, Miss Katie. Miss Katie, thank you so much for supporting Dye Pot Weekly, and I really hope that you love the yarn we are going to create today. If you'd like to learn more about the Dye Pot Weekly Lab Partner Program, there's two different ways that you can sign up. There are details in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Today, we are gonna dye some Dyer Supplier 7525 sock yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It is three ply, which is a lot of fun, and it has a really nice twist to it. I am pre-soaking the yarn in some plain tap water at room temperature for probably 15 to 20 minutes or so. In general, when you want a more even color, you wanna make sure that the yarn is really, really well saturated so you can get that even color. But we're going for something less even today, so it's okay if it's not perfectly soaked. I could even go and start just right now after that quick dip, but I am gonna let it soak around 15 minutes. Today I want to go for a nice green, and so we're going to use a combination of Jacquard Bright Yellow and Dharma Blue Steel. And we're going to use a lot more yellow than the blue because the blue steel is very much like a navy. So I think for our 300 grams of yarn, I'm going to measure out, let's see, about, oh my gosh, do I have exactly it? Oh about 250 milliliters of our bright yellow. And then I wanna measure out about 50 milliliters. And this is approximate because I'm using just this graduated beaker. About 50 milliliters of the blue steel. Right now, looking at the container, I'm not sure about this color. Ooh, actually, that's pretty. Um, it's gonna be very, very deep. And stirring it up gently to not splash. And then I'm gonna use this paper towel. To see where we are with the color. Ooh, it's a very like foresty green type color, which is really, really fun. Very, very fun. I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. I wonder if it breaks. It could break, that would be cool. Even if it does, this is very, very nice for fall. Since it looks like the color could break, we might uh, get a little bit more subtle variegated than just a pure tones of one color. But tonals can have multiple hues, so we'll see where we end up. But I'm actually really excited. The plan is to use most of these 300 milliliters of dye on our yarn. But we're gonna start a little small. So that was about... I don't think that was even, that was about 50 milliliters of our dye stock, and I'm gonna fill this up with water to increase the volume of our color. So when we go and add, start adding it onto the yarn, then we have more volume to add on. This is my four inch deep, full size catering steam pan that I absolutely love. Uh, if you wanna learn more about any of the equipment or supplies that I use, like zip ties and gloves, uh, I have links down in the video description. Okay, I'm coming in with our yarn, and I'm not really squeezing out any of the liquid, and in fact, I think we might be bringing this pre-soaked liquid in. Uh, we will be adding a lot of volume uh, with our dye today as we spread it out. There's no acid in here yet. And we are actually at a nice low immersion setup right now. There's enough liquid, but I am gonna add a bit more just to start us off. Okay, and so this is still pretty low. This 
It's low enough that it might not be perfect for speckles because there's a little area where the yarn is just under the water surface, but this is where we're gonna start for today's colorway. And I'm coming in with this dye that we mixed and I'm adding it onto the yarn. There is no acid in here yet, uh, none at all. I'm just pouring it on in various areas and letting it sort of spread and soak in. I'm gonna add some to these ends. The goal is to add the color uh, across all three skeins somewhat evenly, even though we want the color distribution and everything to be fairly random. And this is sort of the way we will be layering the color as we go today. Uh, I am gonna start heating things up. The pan was cool so far. And we're gonna go ahead and add some vinegar so that way we can start having these colors set. But there's no reason why we couldn't start cold, you could start hot, you could start with acid. But what we'll be doing is using one color and layering it in different stages will create our tonal. These pans with low levels of water heat up pretty quickly. I'm gonna add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. Now, the vinegar isn't evenly distributed around the yarn. The goal is to have the color not bind evenly at all. But I do want to have coverage of this mossy color all over the yarn. So I'm actually gonna mix up some more, very similar to how I did this first time. Um, about 50 milliliters, fill it up the rest of the way with water, and then we'll come back. This overall technique is something that I've probably done more in some leave no die behind situations versus doing uh, with intent. Uh, it's a way I really like using up some leftover color and so I thought it would just be nice and fun. And right now, it's very, very regular. Uh, you can have it be regular, you could have it be less so, but this layering, I think, is just gonna be really nice and fun. Okay, so this is gonna bring us to about half of the total amount of dye that we mixed today. But at some point, we're gonna wanna flip and add color to the other side. But for now, we are layering it on. And you can have as much light or as little light patches as you desire. That is all under your control. But hopefully you can see how we have more control here than we would. Oh, and we can move the yarn around at this point. Uh, which will also help distribute the color. But we have a lot more control do, dyeing the yarn this way than we do in a full kettle because we can move the yarn and we the yarn is more exposed. So we have just more control over where we place those tones to begin with. And let's see. Ooh, we're actually getting really nice color penetration already which is great. There's still some light patches. We will be flipping the yarn over and adding more color, but this is just gonna be a really fun and simple tonal. I think I'm gonna let the yarn sit for maybe about five minutes before we flip and add more color to the other side. The way I've set this up, I am taking advantage of the yarn in the situation where I have it. So I started adding color while it was cold and then sort of let the way the colors were striking and what was happening with the yarn speak to me because different colors strike at different rates. So if you have a dye you know strikes really, really fast, you probably wanna start colder. But if you have a color that spreads more and takes more time to strike, you might wanna start with the yarn hot and then move things around a lot less. These are all little things that you learn by playing with the different colors and 
starting to get an understanding with how they interact with one another. Uh, for example, uh, in the Halloween video that at the time I'm filming came out yesterday, uh, I knew to be very careful with the amount of purple pomp that I used because that can be a color where if you use too much, it can be really, really hard to get it all to absorb. And so those are little things that through experience you start to get a little better handle on. Not that I have the most experience. This is something where I am still learning as I play with more and more colors, but I like a lot of times in the pan to look and see what the colors are doing once it's on the yarn and then adapt my technique from there. And so that's a bit of what I'm hoping to talk through today. At the beginning of this video, I had a sense that I wanted to use about 300 milliliters of a 1% stock solution on my yarn, which would mean I would add a total of three grams of dye because a 1% stock solution is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of liquid. But there's nothing that says I have to use all that color. I have a feeling I'm gonna use all the color, but we could absolutely stop at any point along the way uh, and so but mixing all the color to start especially if you're not going with a pre-mixed color is a great way to make sure you have enough to consistently add more and more so i had a feeling i didn't want to go beyond a one percent depth of shade which would be the one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn i have a whole video on the math of yarn dyeing if you want me to talk about the numbers a lot more uh, and so that again is where I'm starting, but just because you mix up the dye and had a plan doesn't mean you have to use it all. You could save it for another project. Miss Katie, I really hope you like green because I'm going all in with green today. Okay, we're flipping it over and you can see that we've got some really good color penetration already, but there's definitely some lighter areas and darker areas and the more you layer the colors on, it's completely up to you how much color you want. Okay, so I'm coming in with about the same amount that I've been using. And the pan is warm, but not too warm that I can't use my hands to help layer it. And I do think I see a little bit of breaking in here, just a hair. The places where you definitely want to pay closer attention are around the ties, that can be an area where you might end up with some white patches, if that is something that you are worried about. For the next round, I took just a smidge of color and I'm actually gonna dissolve it in a lot of water. This is gonna help me spread out the volume even more, add more coverage, but I'm not gonna lose a lot of variation because I'm not adding too much color to any one position. So by diluting it more, I can get more dilute color all over uh, with, while still maintaining, because I like the, I think I like the amount of variation that we have, but I still want uh, more coverage of just the green overall and so as I'm picking this up and flipping notice that we did not wait this time I am checking around the ties on the yarn and around the zip ties I'm actually moving it a little bit just so that way I can check and see if there are places where I want more color and then I can come in and be like okay I want a little more depth of the darker color but I also want, and I'm coming in with just a tiny amount, this is that mixture, to make sure that I have the amount of color that I want all over. But you can see that this is not adding so much color that it is changing the overall essence a lot. Uh, it is just helping us get that background base color. I'm coming in with our more concentrated color again because I think there's just some areas where I'd like it a little to get a little more variation, a little more depth into the hues. But again, you know, this is just fun and you can go as slow 
or as fast and add it all the way across or just across little areas. That is all entirely up to you. And so this technique as a whole is more hands-on than some other ways that we've dyed yarn. Coming in with just a slight mixture again, looking for areas. And the goal isn't even, even color, obviously, because I want sort of a variegated tonal feel. But I am attempting to add approximately equal amounts of dye across all of these skeins. But you might notice that as we add more and more color, the volume is rising. So almost all of the volume that we've been adding into this pan is from our dyes. Two, three. Just so we can help it absorb. And I'm gonna go ahead and wait about five minutes. And I wanna reiterate, I guess again, that by adding the more dilute dye on here that's bringing up the total depth of shade across the whole yarn versus some of those local pieces. And so I could have kept that more pastel or brought it up to more of a medium tone. So there is control over the amount of contrast based on how dilute the dye is that you're adding. If the dye you're adding is more concentrated, you'll get more contrast uh, when you add it onto the yarn. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm not sure how well the camera is picking up the variation in here, but I am really, really happy. Um, I'm happy with the randomness that I feel in our light and dark patches here on the yarn. Um, it still gives it a very kettle dyed feel. We're just controlling the placement a little bit more. Okay, I am now going to come back in one last time. There's about 50 milliliters of dye left, and I am going to just add, dissolve it in the cup where I mix the dyes. So we are using everything up today, and I am just placing it on the yarn. Down by the ends. And there we go. I've got like a hair more dye in some of our containers that we used today. But otherwise, everything that we mixed is now in the yarn. And remember from some of my other videos, the more you move uh, your yarn, the more even coverage you can get. So if you wanna make sure you don't have pockets of color, you could actually dye it really high contrast, remove the yarn, stir in a lot, and then add it back in. There's many different ways you could play with this, but I am now going to let this heat for about 15 minutes. However, while we're here, one, two, about three more tablespoons since I've had that aliquoted anyway. Today I had a plan, I had a goal in mind, and we achieved it. It might not be exactly the way I thought that we would get there, but again, by letting what's happening in the pan speak to me, I just sort of shifted the way I was adding the colors and how much I was moving it to get the beautiful tonal, it's a subtle tonal, but it's undoubtedly a tonal yarn. And this has enough dark and light patches in it that it shouldn't really pool. It should give some beautiful depth to any type of project that you use it in. One other thing, if you want to get a tonal, more pastel colorway, you can do that with this technique as well. Just make sure your dyes are all a lot more dilute. But adding large volumes, you get control over in the wider pan. But if you don't have a wide catering steam pan, this will still work in a like standard eight quart pot. Just maybe do one skein at a time and you can still layer the colors across the yarn in more controlled placed ways. It has been 15 minutes and I'm actually gonna turn off the heat. Let's look and it looks like our color has cleared. However, I am gonna leave the yarn here in the pan to cool off for at least a little while, a little more heat is not going to cause it any problems. And once the yarn has cooled, then we will go and wash it. Let's wash our beautiful green tonal yarn. I love this color. 
it turned out so nice. And you can really, really see that tonal variation we have in here. That although we placed it where we wanted, it's still even more random and distri distributed through the yarn than it was if I had just done straight kettle dyeing to get that tonal. I'm now gonna add a little bit of just some dish soap to the yarn. And I'm not expecting, and we do not have any bleeding. We did pick up some nice green color in our removable nylon zip ties. <laughs> Which, I mean, on this one you can see it's been dyed a lot, so it's picked up a lot of color over the time. But the nice thing about these nylon ties is that they don't release color after uh, you have dyed them. So that is good. But anyway. I am going to rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my Nina Soft Spin Dryer, and then hang everything up to dry so we can come back and look at the finished yarn. Oh, Miss Katie, I really, really hope you'll love this yarn. It is a beautiful, tonal, mossy green where we have lots of light patches and dark patches, but there's more variation than maybe we would have had with kettle dyeing because the patches of dark and white are a little bit smaller. There is still randomness in here which will make it harder for the colors to pull. And I have nothing against pooling but a lot of times when I'm knitting I really want colors to be well distributed versus pooling. So I like designing things with some amount of randomness so I can avoid that pooling. But using this kind overall kind of technique in the immersion pan you could create a tonal yarn that has more regular variation if you want to go for something that is more regular and a little less random but the point is that we had more control because of how we were applying the color to the yarn and we could eat keep adding the color until we were satisfied with the overall saturation are these three skeins identical no they are not identical and if you were going to use them in one project, you would want to alternate skeins every couple of rounds. I say this a lot because these are the same dye lot. And one big difference between hand dyed yarn and commercially dyed yarn is that even within one dye lot, you can have a little more variation. And so this is just a great way to, if you want to not have a sharp difference when you switch from one skein to another, to just sort of blend them together for that transition. Miss Katie, thank you so much for being today's lab partner and supporting this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I love how this yarn turned out. I want to play with this even more. This is a technique that I love and I really, really hope that you enjoy your yarn. If you would like to learn more how you as a viewer can be a lab partner and get some yarn dyed in one of these Dye Pot Weekly episodes, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Please make sure that you're subscribed and press that bell icon so you can have your notifications turned on so YouTube can let you know when I release a new video. Hanukkah is on the horizon and starting on December 10th, every night there will be a new special yarn dyeing video so we can celebrate this festive holiday filled with light and laughter together. So stay tuned because you don't want to miss any of it. And there will also be regularly scheduled Dye Pot Weekly content throughout the holidays and into the new year. Over the last few months, there have been a lot of requests for green in the comments, and I have been playing with a lot more green lately. It's actually one of my favorite colors, so I don't know why I haven't been playing it with it more, but if you feel like there's any colors that are underrepresented in my content that you would like to see me play with more, let me know down in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.